Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We would like to demonstrate for you the mixing of a polymer reinforced zinc oxide eugenol cement. The material that we'll be using in the laboratories and clinics is called Intermediate Restorative Material, or IRM. The material is manufactured by the L.D. Koch Company in Milford, Delaware. The primary use for this material in dentistry is for long-term temporization or as an interim restoration during prolonged operative procedures. The armamentarium used or required for mixing is the IRM powder and liquid with the dropper for dispensing the liquid onto the pad. A measuring scoop is provided by the manufacturer for volumetrically measuring the powder. The medium-sized parchment mixing pad is used as the mixing surface, parchment being preferable to paper. Parchment will resist the absorption of the liquid into the mixing surface during dispensing. A large mixing spatula the number 336 spatula, or SP9, is used to mix the material, and the Tarno number one filling instrument, the SP1, and the number 25 Wesco plugger, the CD7, are used for inserting the material into the prepared cavity. A paper towel or two by two gauze square should be available to assist in the cleanup procedures. In dispensing the powder onto the pad, the powder should be fluffed lightly in the bottle to ensure uniform density of the powder during measuring. The measuring scoop is filled to excess with the powder without packing it into the container. The scoop is leveled of excess powder using the flat edge of the mixing spatula. The powder is dispensed out onto the center of the mixing pad. One Dispensing of powder is made for each drop of liquid that is going to be used in the intended mix. In this case, we'll dispense two, drop, two scoops of powder and also prepare a third scoop and place it in the upper corner of the mixing pad for use later during the insertion of the material into the prepared cavity. The powder that's dispensed onto the mixing pad is then subdivided into two equal portions. One of those portions is further subdivided into two smaller portions. The liquid is then prepared by swirling within the liquid container to ensure uniformity of composition. The dropper is used to obtain material, the first drop being dispensed back into the container. Two drops are then dispensed out onto the mixing pad adjacent to the largest increment of powder, the dropper being held perpendicular to the pad to ensure uniformity of drop size. The mixing should then proceed immediately by incorporating the largest increment of powder with a folding action into the liquid. This is carried on until all of the powder is wetted by the liquid and then each of the two remaining increments are added to that bulk of mixed material to increase the powder liquid ratio and provide the initial, initial stage of mixing. This portion of the mixing procedure should take approximately 45 to 50 seconds. As the material is mixed, the consistency is very dry, friable, certainly not any usable consistency for application. Once the majority of the powder is incorporated into the liquid, the heavy blade of the spatula is used with heavy pressure to strope the material and attempt to gain homogeneity and to provide a lowered viscosity more suitable for application along the prepared walls of a cavity. The total mixing time to 
prepare the material should be approximately 60 seconds. The spatula is then dipped in, cleaned and dipped in powder and used to roll the material into a rope from which it can be cut into appropriate sections made ready for application directly to the cavity preparation. The application is made using either the Tarno number no. 1 or SP1 instrument and contouring of the material using the Wesco number no. 25 plugger or the CD7. In cleaning up material from the mixing spatula or the instruments, this should be done while the material is still in its unset condition. If allowed to harden, orange oil may be necessary in order to complete the cleaning procedure. We have demonstrated for you a relatively precise mixing procedure for a reinforced zinc oxide eugenol cement when used for interim restoration. By following such a technique, you will obtain good ha clinical handling characteristics in the mix while at the same time gaining optimum physical properties in the set cement. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.